Good afternoon. I want to first off thank members from the Durham Catholic School Board for welcoming us here to Father Leo Austin School. I want to give a shout out to Sam Wisterhoff, the parliamentary assistant, uh, for being a strong leader within education. As likewise, to my colleagues from Parliament who are with us, Minister Scott, MPP Coe and Park, the local MPPs, as well as MPP Smith, um, and all members of our caucus who are present today. In June, the Premier and I made a commitment to parents that we would provide final clarity on how schools will be able to reopen safely, and that we provide choice for parents who are the highest authority when it comes to their children. Today, we are here to unveil a plan to do just that, a plan that was developed by the best medical leaders in this country, Ontario's Chief Medical Officer of Health, the COVID-19 Command Table, the Hospital for Sick Children, parents, students, and many of our education partners. I also want to thank uh, school boards for their immense work they've done over the past few months, including here the Durham Catholic, navigating from very uncharted waters. I know uh, I now want to lay out our plan to get Ontario students safely back to school this September. First, all publicly funded elementary schools will be reopening province-wide in September, five days a week. This will also include a safe reopening of the childcare sector to permit operators to reach that full capacity as of September 1. That was a promise the Premier and I have made to moms and dads of this province, and it's a promise we intend to keep. Second, most secondary schools will reopen under an adapted model that limits the size and the interaction of cohorts. As we have previously laid out, groups of 15 students will alternate between attending class in person and online. Secondary schools with lower risk profiles will be able to reopen with a full return to class in person five days a week. As we've always said, we will continue to respect the choice and the authority of parents, the choice of whether to enroll their children for in-school instru in instruction, the choice of determining when and if they feel comfortable with their child re-entering school during the year, and the expectation delivery of live online teacher-led synchronous learning for their child when they're not in school. We know that the last few months have not been easy for everyone, but I want to take a moment to acknowledge the impacts this has had, as the Premier noted, on children across this province. We've heard loud and clear from medical and pediatric experts uh, that COVID-19 has had profound mental health impacts on our kids. And now more than ever, reopening schools is crucial to the social emotional development of Ontario students. It's also crucial to allowing parents to return to work and to support Ontario's economic recovery. We cannot and will not allow students to return to school without the necessary support and resources to enable them to confidently return and feel safe from the start. It's why we're investing over $736 million more than last year in public education. Now, this includes $10 million of net new funding for mental health and over $15 million to greater increase access to technology for students. Now, today, I'm proud to announce that our government is further supporting the reopening of schools through a range of targeted rapid response investments totaling over $300 million. New money for masks and personal protective equipment for staff and cloth masks for every student in this province. Over $75 million for cleaning supplies and school custodians. Funding to enable crucial health and safety training for all educators, including those occasional teachers and supply teachers. $30 million for additional staffing based on board's needs on the ground, and over $50 million for the hiring of 500 public health nurses to be embedded in our schools to support surveillance testing and treatment of students. We're also enhancing screening and contact tracing, and for the first time, we are implementing a targeted surveillance testing program for secondary students. We are increasing investment for special education as well. And we're asking boards to ensure students with exceptionalities are in class for the entire week. To support these students, I'm proud to announce an additional investment in funding of $10 million. This will support hiring more EAs, specialized equipment, and whatever else it takes to support the continued learning for those kids. Finally, we're adding another $10 million in funding for mental health supports for students. This is on top of the $10 million that we already announced last month, meaning that our already record investment under this government in mental health is truly unprecedented. We're being cautious. We're taking extra health and safety measures. We are putting in the necessary dollars and we are supporting parents through this process. Because as the Premier, the Deputy Premier and I have said all along, we will do whatever it takes to keep your child and our staff safe in this province. And I know it's important for parents to know what the child's school and classroom will look like when they return. And I want to talk to you about a few of those elements. First, on masking. Cloth masks will be required for students in grades 4 to 12, 
based on public health advice. For our youngest learners, masks will be optional. This consistency will protect all children, parents and communities and is directly responsive to the evolving public health data and advice. We're also providing all educators, staff and students with proper PPE to ensure they can return to work and learn with confidence. Second, as noted, we're providing 500 public health nurses in the schools. In our secondary schools, they will assist with surveillance testing strategy, which will be key. This is on top of our already familiar concepts of cohorting and physical distancing. We will also be supporting public health efforts by continuing to promote our screening protocols so that students and staff do not show up to school if they have any symptoms of COVID-19, even if they are mild. Folks, we've pulled out all the stops for the 2 million students in this province. And let's be clear, our students deserve nothing less. This plan will evolve based on the evolution of COVID-19 and the risk to communities across the province. I just want to end by saying thank you. Thank you to our parents, our educators, and our all-star students. You've truly inspired me and our province, and you have led the way. Thank you.